Hey guys, EST here, and I've got an interesting scenario for you. We've got this beautiful, empty, abandoned shed out in the woods, we'll say, and uh, I know where it is, and I know to use it in case of an emergency. Like, I might sleep in it, but oh boy, the sun beating down on it, and I wouldn't want to store, like, my backpack with medications and temperature-sensitive stuff in it when the sun's gonna bake it, and basically we've got a giant metal oven. So how would I rig it up to be cooled off the grid with absolutely no resources in case of an emergency? Let's cover it. So what I've got is this really cool fan, got some anti-scratch duct tape on the clamp there, but that's a nice big clamp. Uh, this is a couple bucks at a flea market. I think I saw these on Amazon for like five to ten. I don't know, haven't checked since inflation, thanks Biden. But the big feature with these, besides being able to mount them, is they really run at quite a lot of watts. I would estimate with the amount of time that they run on the battery, probably 10 watts, so it's a pretty beefy fan. Speaking of battery, it's an 18650, so I've got a cheap little Sanyo in there. But we're not worried about that, in fact I purposely depleted this battery because we're going to be using this charging port right here, a micro USB, unfortunately, instead of Type-C. And this right here, just cooling computer equipment, it has like two years and about 2,000 hours on it and still running. So, hey, for Chinese quality, that's pretty good. So right now, after this building's been baking in the sun, I'm, I'm going to go see how hot it is. So I stuck my hand in here. It's definitely warmer than ambient. we got to get something circulating here. So I strapped the fan to it, pointing inward, which is a good way to just kind of pressurize it and let it equalize out instead of doing the opposite, uh, pull the air out. That just doesn't work as well generally. Uh, I know I'm kind of pointing at the clamp, but let's turn it on. It actually has uh, three speed settings here. Oh, it's cranking. The problem is... Like I said, I already depleted the battery about 95%. I'm surprised it's actually on. It's probably going to kick off any second now. So we need to power it continuously. Now, the interesting thing about this device, because not many do this, is um, it can run on the power from this circuit while charging the battery while still spinning the motor simultaneously. So I've taken the world's most subtle colored USB cable and uh, hooked it up to my battery bank here on the 3.0. I did a review, I think, on, on this at least. It was pretty cool. But how do we know how much this is drawing? Well, we're going to go to another toy. Okay, we've got my little volt and amp meter. Looks like it's running at 1.31 amps and 5 volts. Not bad. I do believe these are 2.1 amp capable. So that's actually, it's going to draw down this pack pretty good. Uh, spoiler alert, this only has, I think, 7 or 8 of that battery in there. So it could probably run this for, I don't know, 8 hours. So this would be cool if you had a way to charge this, which if you saw my other solar video, of course I do. But hey, speaking of solar, wait a minute. So my neighbor's really tall tree was blocking my solar panel, so uh, now we're cooling this camera stand. <laughs> Had to move it to the front yard. So I'll set up the solar right here. There we go. So according to the meter on this, we're pulling in about 4.9 volts and about 1.2 amps. Not bad for the sun being this low. So let's turn it on right now. And at those readings, I could probably put it on about middle speed, about two, and it would keep up. But remember, when the sun goes down and it would, uh, you know, eventually kill the battery on this, we don't need to cool it as much because the sun's down. I only really need to cool it when the sun's out. So this is just a perfect setup. Now, this isn't exactly waterproof would be my guess. So I probably have to um, kind of mount this on the inside sucking in just in case it rained out. Also, I could just buy a waterproof fan, but this particular model was very interesting to me. It, it was very hard to find ones that had the exact uh, specifications that I've shown in this video. So you may be wondering why the meter showed that there was electricity going through it, especially even right now if you looked at the reading, when the fan isn't even on. And the answer is because this also has a charge circuit for the battery. So if you turn the fan off, the solar panel is effectively charging the battery right now. So the importance of that is uh, I can pop this out pretty easily. That's why I have the back uh, thing off. And drop into this nice little flashlight here. And ta-da, we've got some lighting. Look at that. So I could hang this uh, from the string on the inside and have a nice little light for the shed, especially at night when you wouldn't need to be running the fan. So we've got cooling, lighting, and solar, but you probably read the title of this video. Let me explain. So I could probably think of a hundred better ways to do this, but not cheaper ways to do it. Let's break it down. So the uh, nine foot USB cable, that was about eh, $3. Uh, this fan, I got it at a flea market. Like I said, it's about eh, five to 10 bucks. I think I paid three. Now the battery, if you got it retail, it's pretty bad, but you could just you know grab these out of almost any older laptop battery, a lot of different um, power tool batteries. You gotta be careful, make sure they're good and that kind of stuff. But if they're gonna be out in the heat and it's not even technically using the battery anyway, it's just 
like basically a capacitor. Yeah, you could use a pretty unreliable one. Oh, and before you ask, no, you can't just plug it in without a battery and run it on USB power. It has to actually um, have this, I think, to complete the circuit, but also to buffer it in case, you know, a cloud blows past. So we'll just call this free because, I mean, I got 50 of them just from stuff I had laying around and asking my friends if they have any old electronics. So that's the two major components. Uh, this flashlight was about $8, roughly. So the USB volt and amp meter, um, you wouldn't really need it unless you want to sit there and run calculations or test your panel. Just go out and see if it's still spinning or get a basic voltmeter or something, but I also don't remember how much I paid for that. My guess is probably about 10 if you really wanted it. Otherwise, uh, I believe this was about 15 to 20 depending upon where you bought it. So not bad for a full overall solution for cooling and lighting in like some kind of external building where you just power goes out and you just have to vent it. But if you did have to store something temperature sensitive in a, an external building and power is totally demolished, this is a really good way to do it. And as you can see, you can pretty easily fit this in a backpack. It's some kind of fragile stuff, but it's not too bad. And the best part is you could swap out this micro USB for most likely USB type C cable and charge your phone off the solar. And your phone could have a compass, it could have a maps program, it could have all kinds of stuff. Heck, even GPS might still be working. So thanks for watching this completely unsponsored and honestly mostly unbranded cheap Chinese eBay stuff review, which I've done more than a couple of at this point. Go check out the rest if you're interested, and I'll see you guys next time.